friends, and welcome to today's Live Isles class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a great day so far and uh, looking forward to an even better tomorrow. Um, in this class, we are looking at listening part one and two. We're using our exams uh, to give you a sample listening IELTS section, and I will give you some strategy on how to get correct answers and get higher band scores. Welcome, Manvir. Hi, Ravi. Good to have you in the class. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. Uh, we help thousands of students every day to improve their English and to succeed on their IELTS exams. Hi, Akshay. Good to see our members in the class also. Um, students, our websites look like this. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. We are a British Council Test Registration Center and um, certified agents. You just click that big red button to join the premium package. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background. Uh, and uh, it's at gltshelp.com and you click that big red button. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access, so well worth it. Uh, Rashika, honey, good to see more of our members joining in. Welcome, uh, Victor. Nice to see our regular students. If anybody has questions, uh, please don't be shy. Uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Make sure to install our apps on your phone, Academic IELTS Help for Academic, General IELTS Help for General, and check out Instagram, IELTS underscore aehelp and GIELTS Help. We've got lots of goodies there for you. Uh, lots of free materials too, students, so uh, don't be shy. Use it. All right, everyone. Um, so we're doing uh, listening parts one and part two today. Uh, and then we'll do listening parts three and four tomorrow. I will walk you through this as we do it. So uh, I'm going to get right into it. And uh, we're going to be looking at our second exam. Or sorry, actually our first exam. We're looking at our review test. Um, and uh, we're looking at, of course, section one uh, firstly. Now, if you have our premium package, this is... Uh, CD1 track one, we're starting right from the beginning as we're setting up our new studios uh, here in Victoria. Uh, welcome for Dobbs. Good to see you in the class. Long time no see. Um, all right, everyone. So here we go. We're going to get right into uh, this uh, listening. Um, we're not going to uh, dawdle too long. Um, just give me two seconds here while I set up the audio. Now I am going to play this uh, I'm going to play this audio through my Bose speaker and it's a good speaker but if it's quiet for you then make sure to turn up your volume use a headset if you have one and uh, very importantly don't put your answers in the chat uh, we will go through the answers together after. Don't put them in the chat because that could be confusing for other students, especially if you give the wrong answer. So just put your answers onto a separate piece of paper, okay? All right, uh, so I'm going to hop over to our uh, website here and uh, go into my student account. And I'm going to check and make sure that my volume is max. It is. It's at 100. All right, everyone. So uh, let's do this together. Um, so you're going to listen and answer. Uh, now, I haven't tested this system uh, too much in Victoria. So if anything's up, do let me know. OK, I'll be watching the chat. All right. OK, so here we go. Let's do this. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. 
At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men registers for a football league. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. The man says he wants to play in Chester, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello there, I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right, uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. Well, we have two spots left open on the team in Chester and five spots open on the team in Liverpool. There's a very good chance you would have to try out for the team in Chester. Are you a good player? I consider myself a good player, yes. I have been to a number of the Autumn Men's League games in the past, just as a spectator, and I'm sure I would have no trouble fitting in. OK, good. So we will register you for Chester then. I just need to get some information from you, starting with your position. Where on the field do you prefer to play? I'm a midfielder, although really, I can play anywhere aside from goalkeeper. Oh, I forgot to ask your name. Right, I guess that's important. My name is Steve Tremell. Would you mind spelling Tremell for me? Certainly. Tremell is spelled T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L. -L. Right, now I need your home address, including your postcode. I live in Chester, of course, at 452 King George Avenue. The postcode is MS868P4. MS868P4? Yes, that's right. And your date of birth, sir? The 8th of September, 1986. OK. Now I need your phone number. Just a mobile number will do. I don't have a mobile phone right now, unfortunately. I can give you my girlfriend's number instead. That would be all right, I suppose. Good. Her number is 329-6332-70. Fine. I think that's all the information I need to gather from you. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do have a couple. First, when does the season start? The season starts on the 28th of September, although your first game is later, I think. Let me check the schedule. Yes, your first game is October the 1st in Liverpool. Let me make a copy of the schedule for you. Thank you. Could you also tell me how long each game is? Each game has two halves, 40 minutes each half, so the game is 80 minutes long. That's a little shorter than the other leagues I've played in. Games are usually 90 minutes. Yes, our spring and summer leagues are 90 minute games, but our autumn league has only 80 minute games. I think it has something to do with the poor weather. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. OK, can you tell me how many players are on each team? And I mean on the whole team, not just the players on the pitch. Usually there are five additional players to the 11 on the pitch. So there are 16 players on each roster. We generally find that to be the perfect number. It allows for a few players to miss a game, but still allows lots of playing time for each player. Yes. Playing time is what I was worried about. I don't want to pay my money and then sit on the sidelines the whole season. 
Are there minimum playing time requirements? Yes, each player must play a minimum of half a game, so you are guaranteed at least 40 minutes of playing time per game. Wonderful, that puts my mind at ease. Could you tell me what facility we play at in Chester? That information is on the schedule, along with the addresses of all the other facilities in the league. Here's your schedule. Thank you. Oh good, it states we play two streets from my flat. How convenient. That is very lucky. Do you have any more questions? No, I think that's it. Oh wait, how much does it cost to register? Uh, it's going to be £125 for the season, including all fees. How would you like to pay? I'll be paying cash. Right. Would you like a receipt? Um, if you find that it doesn't work out time-wise, you can always bring the receipt back and we will do the thing. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and use that half minute to check your answers. It's extremely uh, valuable to do that. Let me just stop our audio here. Okay. So, um, before we go through the answers together, uh, you probably noticed that at the beginning, um, I was uh, scrolling to the other parts of the uh, listening section, okay? They're called parts now, not section anymore since 2020. And since 2020, you do not have an example. They go right into the uh, speaking um, audio. So careful with that, okay? Um, when you're doing your older practice exams, this is from before 2020, you'll hear an example, now you don't. Um, now, you probably noticed that uh, I was scrolling to the other uh, parts, part two, uh, three, and four. Uh, anybody know why I did that? So why did I look at part two, part three, and part four um, before the audio started for part one? Okay. All right. Ravi, what do you think? You've got an example. Oh, you got an example in your exam on April 10th, Ravi. Interesting. Okay, they might have been using or reusing audio from an older exam. That's kind of strange because they definitely changed that. Um, I wonder if, yeah, that's, that's really bizarre. You should not have gotten an example. Hmm. Strange indeed. Okay, Mal, there are 10 questions to each part and there are 40 questions altogether. Anybody know why I looked at, um, okay, so Manvi says to know the topic of part two, three, and four. Yeah, that's because they're more challenging and absolutely for Dobbs, you're right. Um, it's to be uh, more mentally prepared uh, for those parts, okay? Now, if anybody is doing the... Um, computer-based exam, it is really easy to uh, go to those parts. So um, during the beginning, you definitely have about one minute of instructions that they give you, just like I showed you, okay? And it is a great time to look at the topics of part two, three, and four, especially in the computer-based exam. Nobody's going to bother you because you have your own little booth and you can click um, on the bottom of the screen in your computer-based exam, you can literally just click on part two, on part three, on part four. So it is super fast to check the topics there, okay? And just look at the first couple questions. So you go, aha, okay, that one is going to be about climate change. Aha, that one is going to be. So that's what I did there, okay? So um, I quickly... With the paper base two, you're flipping. This is basically the slowest way to do it here in this live class with this thumb scrolling. Um, but um, here, uh, you notice that uh, the uh, second part is going to be about the Titanic, okay? And uh, the third part is going to be about um, uh, some kind of a group project. So discussion. Um, group task when the task is completed so some kind of a group project I can get that idea and then uh, part four uh, the topic is boom right there in part four it's really easy because usually the topic is just like that it's climate change okay 
So you get a really clear idea and your brain starts to think about that information and bring up useful vocabulary and ideas from your past experiences, okay? So it's a super useful strategy. I did this during my official IELTS exam back in February during the listening and I found it extremely useful. I did the computer based by the way. So I just clicked part two, question one, boom, part three question and you see them right away. And no, it's, it's, you're absolutely allowed to do that. No uh, proctor is going to say, hey, you can't click on those sections, okay? So really important tip. You can easily save a few points by doing this. Okay, I'm gonna even write it in here for all of you so it's crystal clear in your minds, okay? So uh, at the start of the listening section, instructions, during the instructions, check out the uh, topics of the more difficult sections because definitely uh, section two, section three, section four definitely are more challenging than section one. Okay. All right. So check out the topics of the more difficult uh, parts two, three, and uh, four so that you start to get an idea and as Ferdovs correctly said um, and you get mentally uh, prepared okay very very useful all right okay uh, so then you go along you don't have a lot of time to think so make sure to focus one of the really important tips I can give you is stay focused um, throughout the listening it's easy to kind of uh, get sidetracked and kind of space out I actually to be perfectly honest with you when I did my uh, official outs exam I did space out a little bit at one of the parts, but luckily from the question, I was able to basically guess the answer correctly. And I'm sure it was correct because I did get a band nine. So uh, you can do that, but it's better not to have to do that. Um, so here we go. Uh, question number one, how many football matches has the man played in the league? Is it A, 10, B, zero, or C, 40 to 50? Okay, All right. Nazoka, thank you for that feedback. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Uh, four days a week, Milena, Wednesday to Saturday. Okay. So, honey, Prathamesh Rashika Akshay, um, say B, zero. Make sure you put B and not zero. Okay. It's going to be easy in the computer base because you just click B. Uh, on the paper base, make sure you put B into your answer sheet. Computer based definitely has some advantages. It's more difficult to make mistakes because you're just clicking on the B, okay? Um, so B0, um, why? What does he say? Anybody catch that? Uh, he says, uh, I have been to a number of the uh, football matches in the league, uh, but just as a spectator. Okay, so only as the audience. Now, the other reason we know that it's not A or C is because he doesn't say 10. He doesn't say, oh, I've played in 10 games. Oh, I've played between 40 and 50 games. The man doesn't say that. So we know that C and A are likely not it because we don't hear that information. So he says spectator. Spectator says uh, zero, right? So played and watched, those are two different verbs or actions, okay? So a little bit tricky on that first question, but it's clear. All right, uh, next question. What position does the man play? So that was the first question by the registrar, the administrator. Um, the man asks, oh, what, what position do you play? And he says, well, I can play, my position is uh, midfielder, but I can really play anything aside from goalkeeper, okay? Um, so he says, Aside from, okay, aside from is besides, and in this case, that means that he does not play goalkeeper, which makes sense, right? Goalkeeper is a very special uh, position in uh, football. Goalkeeper uses their hands. They have a very different kind of strategy, so uh, somebody has to be either a goalkeeper or on the other parts of the pitch. That makes sense, right? So it's not goalkeeper. The correct answer here 
his midfield. Now, striker could be okay too because he does say, well, you know, but in the aisles, uh, you're always looking for the best answer. And the best answer is midfield because he says, I'm a midfielder. That's directly his answer. I'm a midfielder, although I could play any position aside from goal keep goalkeeper. Okay, so not goalkeeper. He could play striker, but his position is midfield. All right, and then um, for part one in the listening, you often have to fill out some demographic information, which is basically names, uh, credit, imaginary credit card numbers, uh, postal codes, etc., addresses. Okay, so here uh, the man says, okay, I need your name. And he says, well, my name is Steven. Now, don't panic if you don't catch it the first time because in part one, they almost always, I want to say always, but I'm careful with that word. Uh, they almost always repeat this kind of um, information. So, Savinch says it's Tramel spelled T R A double M uh, E double L. And I believe that's exactly how the man says it. And then uh, the other man says T R A M M E L L. Yeah, that's correct. So, Tramel. Now, capital letter on that first letter, very, very important. Okay. Uh, in the computer-based exam, you can just hit caps lock and answer all questions in capitals, okay? Uh, just be really careful with the spelling. It's okay to use all capitals, and you can just hit caps and then go all capitals for uh, the uh, listening section. So you can do that, and it's totally fine. Um, okay, address is 452 King George Avenue. They give you that in this case. It's fine. And then the postcode, what is the postcode for uh, this uh, man registering for the football league? So uh, again, I believe they say it twice. So uh, sometimes they even give it to you three times, like they'll make a mistake and then say it again. Okay, so it's MS868P4, MS868P4. Careful with these letters like P. Uh, I recommend using capitals here for sure. And uh, just write it down the first time real quick. And then the second time they say it, check it. Okay. So try to catch it the first time. Um, and uh, spaces don't matter. Okay. So, um, or whether it's or not, it's the exact same format as you would see it in Britain. It's fine. Uh, what's important is that you have the correct sequence. MS 868B4, right letters, right numbers. Okay. All right. So, and then you get a little bit more information. You're patient. You're following along. Make sure to follow carefully with the audio. Train yourself to be active and attentive. So as soon as you hear this number, you know that answer five is coming soon. Okay. It's important to read ahead as well. So question number five, you had to match the time with the event. Um, here you had four choices, 30th of September, 28th, 3, 1st of October, and you had to figure out when is Steven's first football match. So for number five, the correct answer, honey says it's D, it's October 1st. Okay, uh, bonus question, when does the season start? So the correct answer, number five is D. Uh, let me give you a number five bonus question, uh, start of season what's the correct answer let's see who was really paying attention to that one okay so they also give you this information and it's up there yeah so the start of the season was uh i believe 28th of september right this is the start of this the the uh, season is 28th of september but your first game is a little bit later than that yes it's October 1st. Very good. So we've got some uh, active listeners. Um, when you're practicing for the listening section at home, what I highly recommend doing, is it's especially a good exercise with partners, is don't worry about the questions. Just listen to a, uh, an audio and create your own questions and ask them from each other. Okay, everybody pick that. It makes it a little bit uh, funner. 
And also, uh, it really challenges your active thinking back and forth with another individual. So uh, not just paying attention to the specific question, but really uh, paying attention uh, to the, um, the entire information. Okay. So everybody got that? Thumbs up? Practicing at home? Just listen to the audio, don't worry about the questions, and in partners, ask each other questions back and forth, okay? Really fun, okay? All right. So here we go, you had a little bit of break, um, and uh, then uh, you had to fill out this simple chart here, and it says, complete the table below, write no more than two words for each answer, okay? So the league is an autumn league, um, bonus question again, uh, what other two leagues do they mention? So there's the Autumn League, and then they actually mention two other leagues. What's the other two leagues uh, that they mention? Honey says summer, yes, not winter. Okay, there was no winter. It was spring and summer. Very good, Mandy. Yeah, spring and summer leagues. Uh, spring and summer leagues are 90 minutes. Autumn leagues are 80 minutes, right? So something to do with the weather, right? Okay, uh, how many players on the roster? Many of you got that. There's 16. There's 11 on the pitch, uh, five on the sideline. Uh, minimum playing time. What's the answer here for number seven? It was a little bit trickier. You have to pay attention here. Uh, when you write or type this for sure. So 16, uh, what's the minimum playing time? Ravi says 40 minutes. Yeah, and you can say it like this as well. Absolutely, 40 mins. Yeah, so 40 minutes or 40 mins, M-I-N-S dot, right? So you have to play at least half a game, okay? Cool. All right. So uh, moving on, uh, number eight, um, this was multiple choice. A lot of students find multiple choice questions uh, in listening, reading challenging. For multiple choice, the trick is to not look at the answers, but really think about the answer from the question. So the question is, why does the man say he's lucky? So when I see this question, I'm listening for, oh, I'm super fortunate. Oh, I'm super lucky. Okay, so, oh, I'm super fortunate because, so I'm listening for this type of phrase. Um, I shouldn't be staring at this because there's too much information here. If I'm staring at this, I could lose the audio and I could also get confused. So it's a really bad idea, okay? So I remember he said something like, oh, okay, that's, that field is really close to my home when we're, where we're playing. And then the other man, the registrar, says, oh, that's really lucky. So he was able to find a team to play on. No, there's a minimum playing time. Nope. The playing field is close to where he lives. But a bing, but a boom, but a bam. It's C, right? There we go. So C is the correct answer. So again, for multiple choice, and I'm going to give you a note on this because I know it's, it's one that really frustrates some candidates. Um, and the reason why is because so many candidates are staring at the choices like it's going to jump out and be like, hey, I'm the correct answer. Um, but that doesn't happen, okay? So for MCQ, you must focus... Must focus on the question and the audio, not the choices. Listen and catch the answer and then match the right choice. Okay? Uh, even for a native li uh, speaker of English, uh, it's very difficult to try to figure it out by staring at the questions. You really do have to listen for the answer, okay? Uh, Natalia, yeah, I would put a dot just to be on the safe side um, because technically it is incorrect to not put a dot for an abbreviation. 
Um, I haven't actually asked um, British Council yet if that's absolutely mandatory, um, but without knowing 100%, I would go the safe route, uh, Natalia, and put the dot after the abbreviation. Yeah, I would, okay? Uh, so I wouldn't just write min without the dot because that technically is a fractured word and it's not correct, okay? So good question. I, I would put the dot. I think that's the safe bet. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so back to point. Here we go. Number nine and ten, uh, short answers. Again, here you have to listen. So this is like basically what you have to do with a multiple choice, but you don't even have the option. You really do just have to catch uh, the answer. Okay. Yes, Prathamesh, there we go, you're on board. <laughs> All right, um, so write no more than two words for each answer, two words, really pay attention to that. What is the cost of the football league? What is the cost? How much does it cost? Anybody catch that? It was very clear. The man says 125 pounds, yes, and man V, that's the best way to do it is with the symbol if you can. So uh, this is where the computer base is a little bit more difficult because you probably won't see the symbol. Um, yeah, they use the QWERTY keyboard. I don't know. If, I think it is the British keyboard. I think you might find the pound signal there, uh, but you might see the dollar signal there. Uh, anyway, you should use the pound sign um, if you have it. If you don't write it, okay? But the pound symbol is the easiest. Uh, check your keyboard, okay, in your exam center. If it has the pound symbol and the percent symbol, definitely use it. Okay, instead of using the word. Yeah, so Akshay says, yeah, it doesn't have the symbol for pound. Yeah, because they're usually using, I mean, most keyboards in the world that are produced in the West for English speakers are the American keyboards that are using the dollar sign, and the, especially the American dollar sign, because the American dollar sign and Canadian dollar sign are different. Okay? All right. Uh, Niranya, in the audio, we just listened to it. It's on our website, but don't worry. We'll be listening to part two here shortly, okay? All right, uh, number 10, how does the man pay for the registration fee? So what does the man do? Okay. Yeah, you can write the word, Venancia. You can write the word pounds, especially if you don't find the symbol, then you have to write pounds, okay? Uh, he pays cash. Yeah. C-A-S-H, cash it is, uh, he pays, he's registered, fantastic, yeah, by cash, okay, you can write by cash, but cash is enough, all right, okay, so uh, time to add up your scores, students, what did you get out of 10, how did you do, Manvi says 10 out of 10, that's fantastic. That's really what you're going for in part one is a perfect 10 score. You want to get nine or 10, okay? So ideally for part one, um, in a perfect world, you're basically nine or 10, okay? Uh, the reason being is if you're losing more than one or two marks in part one, you're going to be in trouble for your overall score in the listening because Part two, part three, part four, they're just going to become more and more challenging and you're likely to lose even more marks in those uh, parts. So you really want to be as close as possible to a perfect score in part one, okay? Really aim for that perfect part one score. All right, students, let's do this. We're going to fly through part two. We're going to do it nice and smooth. Uh, so again, I'm going to play it through my uh, microphone audio uh, please uh, do not put, do not put, some students were doing this, but don't put your answer into the chat because it's confusing for other students, especially if you're giving wrong answers. So um, just save it for the end. Uh, be kind, be nice, play good, um, play well, <laughs> and uh, play fair. And uh, we'll go through the answers together at the end, okay? So I'm going to hop back here uh, for the... Um, Audio, and we're going to get right into it. Okay, here we go with uh, part two. So just give me a second here. I'm going to do the setup so we don't have any interruptions. And uh, here we go. Part two off of our website. 
Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a radio presenter interviewing a woman about the infamous ship Titanic. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon to all our listeners and welcome back to History Now, a weekly programme that reflects on subjects of historical influence. Today we are going to speak with Dr Andrea Smithson, an historian at the University of Glasgow. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Peter. What are you going to talk about today, Andrea? I'll be talking about one of the most catastrophic events in maritime history the sinking of the Titanic. I can't wait for you to begin. Thanks, Peter. The Titanic was an enormous ship. The makers called it unsinkable. From end to end, it measured approximately the length of three football pitches. It had the capacity to carry over 3,500 passengers, as well as the over 800 people on the crew of the ship. Despite its massive size and impressive capacity, the Titanic was able to cruise at a speed of 40 knots. This was in large part due to the 59,000 horsepower engine. Just how much is 59,000 HP? Well, in literal terms, it's like being pulled by 59,000 horses. More realistically, it's the equivalent power of 500 cars. On the maiden voyage that left Southampton, England, on the 10th of April 1912, there were 1,343 passengers and 885 crew members. There were three different classes of tickets for those aboard the Titanic. A third class ticket was the lowest level ticket. At the time, it cost between three and eight pounds. A second class ticket cost about 12 pounds. A first class ticket cost anywhere from 30 pounds all the way up to 870 pounds. In today's money, 870 pounds is over 20,000 pounds. You may be wondering what the people in the first class were paying for. They had luxurious rooms on the highest decks, delicious meals for breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as the finest entertainment money could buy. On the other hand, those in third class slept in cramped rooms which were quite plain and small and did not have access to the fine restaurants and entertainment on the upper decks of the ship. Now I'd like to tell you about a few lesser known facts about the Titanic. Although there were four large funnels or smokestacks on the Titanic, only three of them were functional. One of the funnels was put there just to make the ship look even bigger and more impressive. The ship carried over 70 tonnes of food for the passengers, including over 40,000 eggs. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the night of the 14th of April 1912, on her maiden voyage, the Titanic hit an iceberg. About three hours later, early morning the next day, the ship sank. The reasons for the sinking are numerous. First, the watertight doors, which were supposed to keep water out, didn't work properly. Second, the night of the 14th of April was incredibly calm on the water. Icebergs are easily spotted when there are waves crashing against them. On this night, there were no waves. The strength of the metal in the Titanic was not as it should have been. The metal became brittle in the freezing cold and was easily broken by the iceberg. Another big factor was the inability of the Titanic to turn quickly. Once the lookouts had spotted the iceberg, the captain ordered the ship turned, but it was too late. If the ship had been able to turn faster, it would have missed the iceberg. 
One of the biggest tragedies about the sinking was that there were not enough lifeboats for everyone on the ship. In addition to this, many of the lifeboats left the sinking vessel with less than half of the people they were designed to carry. For example, the first lifeboat off the Titanic left with only 27 of the allotted 65 passengers. This unfortunate occurrence can be attributed to panic on the part of the passengers and crew. One can only imagine the sheer terror on board the ship that early morning. 1,523 out of the 2,228 passengers and crew perished that morning. Most died from the near freezing temperature of the Atlantic Ocean. Others drowned after being trapped in the lower decks. 705 people lived to tell their story, most of them women and children who were put on the lifeboats before the grown men were. Because of this, 94% of the first class passenger women and children were saved, while only 14% of the third class passenger men survived. Overall, 60% of the first class occupants survived, while only 25% of the third class ticket holders lived in the aftermath of this tragedy. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And always use that half minute, students, to check your answers, check for spelling mistakes, uh, maybe some uh, missed information in the questions. So careful, you can usually catch one or two mistakes. I know I did when I uh, took my official IELTS exam. Uh, okay, so. Let me just stop the audio on our website here. We'll come back to the questions and go over them nice and quickly together. So uh, here we go. Uh, question 11. What was the overall? Overall means the total capacity of the uh, Titanic. By the way, while everyone is giving me that answer, uh, I did see that uh, super chat donation, Arth, I believe from New Zealand at the current time. Thank you for that, Arth. I appreciate that. Okay, that's really cool. Um, yeah, Super Chat. I sometimes see it. I don't really talk about it much, but I appreciate that. That's a really nice gesture. Okay. Uh, so, Gungser says it's 4,300. Yeah, because it was the total. So, it's 800 crew members, 3,500 passengers. Total was 4,300. Yeah. Yeah. So number 11, correct answer is C, 4,300. You had to do a little bit of math, okay? It was total was 800 plus 3,500, so equals 4,300, okay? All right, number 12, what was the cost of a third class ticket? 30 to 870 pounds, that would be way too much money back then uh, for a, a low level ticket. Between one and two pounds, meh. Maybe seems even a bit cheap. And if you caught it, it was three and eight. So it's C again. Yeah, so it was C and C, okay? So three and eight. So C is the correct answer. Absolutely, very good. Uh, nice job, uh, Prathamesh. Honey, good job, members. <clears throat> Venancia, very nice. Savinch, nicely done, Ravi. Okay, if you're doing the paper-based exam, make sure that you're uh, writing <clears throat> the letter, uh, not the actual answer. Okay, this one was an interesting one, so it's worth three points. So for each one that you get correct, you get a point. For each one that you don't, you get wrong, you lose a point. Um, what were the three benefits of a first-class ticket? It's good to kind of write down notes here. And even in the computer-based exam, you do have a piece of paper and a pen, so you can take notes. Uh, that's what I did, and it worked really well. Um, watertight doors, uh, luxurious rooms, correct. So B, that was one. Okay. Uh, finest entertainment that they can buy, C, so B and C were correct. High quality meals, um, yeah, definitely. So B, C, and D. Access to the casino, they didn't talk about that. Uh, if you saw the movie Titanic, careful, uh, you might answer that. Uh, lower deck rooms, uh, no, that would be a wrong answer because that's where the third class ticket holders were is the lower deck rooms, right? So that's false, so we know that's not right. So it's B, C, and D uh, in any order. And uh, I see that many of you did get that correct, which is nice to see. A lot of students find this challenging. Okay, um, good. So let's keep going here.
Number 16, which of the following is the best representation of the Titanic? We have figure A with one, two, three, four, five smokestacks, B with one, two, three, four, and C with just three uh, smokestacks. The correct answer here is B. That's right, had four smokestacks, but only three were working. Too bad, they should have taken that extra one out and put in more lifeboats. Um, but uh, yeah, so four, they wanted the ship to just look really big. Uh, so it had four smokestacks. That's right. Okay, and then we had this uh, kind of flow chart here. Now, in the computer-based exam, I had a question like this. It was a flow chart, and you actually had to drag and drop the answers into the correct um, section. So uh, in the computer base, like I had my answers here and then I had to click on it and just drag it and put, drop it in there and put, drop it in there. Okay. Um, so ex extremely calm night. There were no waves. Very nice. A lot of you got that. Yeah, there were no waves. That was the problem. They couldn't see the iceberg because there were no waves hitting it. So you couldn't see that big splash on the side of the iceberg. Okay, so the Titanic hit the iceberg and the watertight something failed. What failed? What was this issue that uh, should have been working so that it doesn't sink the boat? Obviously, it created too much weight in the, in the bottom of the ship, in the hull of the ship. So the watertight doors, that's right, the watertight doors. So in a big ship, they have doors that can seal off the sections that have uh, started to um, leak water. That didn't work in this case because uh, the doors failed and the water just pushed through. Okay, uh, many what left the ship half full? They even give an example. They said the first one off the ship only had 23 of the 65 allotted members. Lifeboats, very good, very good, seven, seven inch. And it is one word, Prathamesh, nicely put. So life boats, plural, one word, it counts. All right. Um, and the last one, 1,523 people died, most of them from the freezing cold temperature of what? Uh, you might be able to even guess this if you know where the Atlantic, or sorry, where the uh, Titanic sank. Uh, Honey says it's the Atlantic Ocean. It is, and it's a name, so it's Big A Atlantic Ocean. You need both words. Big A, Big O. Make that O really nice and big, so it's clear that it's the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, Big A, Big O. If you have a small O, they'll mark it wrong. So careful. Okay, very good, Natalia. Nicely done. So the Atlantic Ocean. All right, students. Uh, great job. Uh, what did you get out of 20? So combine your score for part one and two. How did you do? How did you do? Gungster says, I failed. I don't, know, I don't know what a fail is. You might have gotten a lower band score, Gungster, but don't panic, okay? So... Uh, Natalia says 19 out of 20. That's fantastic. Ravi, nice score. 19 out of 20 is great. Prathamesh, I'm guessing you 10 out of 10 for part two. Um, very nice. So perfect scores are always great. Nobody's complaining about that. Uh, Honey says 17 out of 20. That's not bad. So, um, let's say 16 or greater for part one and two combined. That's kind of your goal. Okay. If you're under 16, eh, you could be in trouble because part three and part four are going to be a lot more challenging, okay? So you want to be about 16 or higher. That means 80%, people. So you want to be at about 80% accuracy or higher for part one and two so you can get that band six, five, seven or more, okay? All right, everyone. So that was uh, one of the listening exams taken from our six exams that you'll find on our website. We're putting four more up in the next few months. So... We'll have 10 full exams for you. We have six currently. And uh, if you like that and you want videos and strategies and apps and lots and lots more, then uh, uh, check us out at uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. 
It is this website here. Uh, we are a British Council registration center and agents. You can click that big red button to join our premium package, one-time payment, lifetime access. It's worth uh, the money because it's only a fraction of the cost of the actual aisles. So why not get the best? We are world leaders when it comes to aisles preparation. And galtshelp.com, that's general aisles. That's the green background. Click that big red button. Uh, that's it for me for today, but I will be back tomorrow at the same time with this exam, and we're going to do part three and part four, and I will give you more practice and more strategy, okay? So threat not, uh, tomorrow we shall uh, continue this adventure for the IELTS listening section, and uh, we're going to triumph together, all right? Uh, seven inch, great. We'll see you tomorrow. Rashika, nice job, everyone. You're very welcome, Vanancia. Uh, yeah. um, Eugene, thanks for the emojis. All right, everyone, I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria, British Columbia, West Coast, Canada. Much love to all of you wherever you are in this beautiful world. Hopefully, I will catch you tomorrow. Bye for now.